Hello, everybody, to another session, uh, a spring version of the Excel Cafe, as you can see here on this nice picture. And uh, I'll hand over to Uwe, who will uh, present the first topic of today. And I think we, we have to skip the second I have announced uh, due to technical issues. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think we, we can do it nicely with the first topic as well. Uwe? Okay, then I will take over. Hello, everybody. So, um, the topic what I would like to talk about are, uh, so we, uh, we label it dynamic assignment of uh, signature strategies. I will explain you in the next more minutes and some slides um, what's behind this reason, why we thought that it might be good to provide such a functionality, and how it uh, currently looks like. Okay. So, first of all, um, this is um, the main part of our presentation. There's one additional topic um, that handles uh, wrong SXS versions. Here, I just want to tell you, say, give a brief update on, on this topic. Uh, we saw that this happened at one, at one customer, and um, though it's a very rare scenario, um, I just want to talk a little, 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 uh, give you more, a little bit more information about this issue. And of course, um, we will promise that we'll have more time for questions and answers. Okay. Coming to the first topic, what was the motivation? Um, if we talk about um, digital signature processing, then if you want to execute multi-step um, signatures, then you have to assign a signature strategy. And this means you have to do it via the um, X step, uh, at the point in time when you maintain the X step. So this looks like. Um, the, let's say one thing that is state of the art is um, if you want to use a multi-step signature, process, then you have to choose one of those digital signature strategies that you see here that you previously defined in the corresponding customizing and uh, assign it to your input field for the digital signature. Once it is fixed, after you created a control recipe and start uh, with maintaining your PI sheet, it is not possible to exchange this signature strategy against another one. This has some consequences. We had uh, scenarios where, say, um, the business process that is executed in production, um, it re re really required um, the usage of different signature strategies. Just to give you a brief example, let us assume you have a um, you have a weighing step, and the end user, the shop for user, can choose between three different weighing systems for weighing the um, components or active ingredients. But um, depending on the weighing system, it, is, it might be necessary that um, we have um, to do different kinds of cross-checks. You see the example here for weighing system A, you might have a cross-check of the worker that does the weighing and the shift lead. For weighing system B, it might be necessary that a QM specialist um, gives his or her individual signature uh, in addition to the individual signature of the worker. And for weighing system C, it might be an elder one, or let's say it might be a little bit special. Uh, you have to have a, a triple um, signing by the worker, the QM specialist, and the shift lead. So if you have similar business processes, and we know from other customers that, you, especially for the weighing scenarios, we um, this is a valid business requirement, then this means you have to, um, to triple the content of your um, X step or let's say the content of um, of your PI sheet because you can only have a signature strategy assigned fixed in a fixed way to the input field for digital signature. So if you want to offer a choice of those three different weighing systems that can be used, you have to, um, let's say at least the duplication of the input field for digital signatures. And um, if you have let's say larger PI sheets. Uh, this can then lead also to the problem that you have a lot of content that is, let's say, obsolete because the end user will choose only one of those three options and execute the weighing and uh, thus execute the digital signature process. And, of course, if the PI sheets are larger and, uh, let's say, in the, in the worst case, two-thirds of the content is not filled with any value or not um, say required, once the um, weighing system is chosen, this will at least um, say, um, decrease, uh, lead to a decrease in maintainability. 
and um, therefore we, we thought it might be good to um, think how could we um, enable um, the system to react on here let's say on, on conditions when you um, create or when you come to the point that you want to choose the weighing system and um, tied to the weighing system uh, a distinct signature strategy has to be executed and then we thought about the following concept that I would also to demo later on okay the concept first of all it is um, functionality that's encapsulated by a um, business add-in this has the big advantage that um, and we have received some information, uh, some more details later on. That um, if you don't want to use this functionality, um, you're not forced to, and nothing will uh, change um, with respect to the functionality and uh, the runtime. Um, except runtime, also the runtime of the PI sheet um, that, this, that belongs to the PI sheet. Um, during the X step maintenance, um, once the functionality uh, is activated by providing a known custom implementation, you get an additional entry. Um, on the right uh, side here of the slide, you see this entry dynamic signature strategy. This is a so-called placeholder signature strategy. This value does not exist in the customizing. It's uh, added after the body um, is activated um, um, and can be chosen with uh, uh, this if for help for the field you um, select the signature strategy in the corresponding X step field. The next thing that you have to do is then that you um, have to assign, let's say you have to prepare an X step parameter. And this X step parameter has the following um, purpose. It will get uh, the value of the selected signature strategy. It is then returned um, by, let's say, a dynamic function module call when uh, you add the, as an example, um, when you add the number of the chosen weighing system, and then the system can determine the corresponding signature strategy and return it back. We'll see this also later on in, in, in the demo. And the important thing is that this extra parameter uses a dedicated characteristic. So um, we have one um, new PBPI characteristic, but um, it is um, also possible, and so let's, let's say it, it is um, intended that you can use uh, and choose and create your own custom characteristic that then uh, gets validated with, uh, let's say, uh, is assigned to the extra parameter. Next thing that we um, have to um, execute is a happy to define, and this is um, in our concept a dynamic function module that um, takes any input um, of your business process, as an example the number of the chosen weighing system, and then um, returns the signature strategy um, that is, um, say, tied to the um, chosen weighing system. And um, this is quite flexible, so if you have different or additional, um, let's say, selection criteria for defining which uh, signature strategy should be chosen, you can just implement your own function module call, uh, sorry, it's your own function module, and then uh, the only thing that the function module then has to return is uh, the information of the selected signature strategy. You might see this here down below. This is the exporting parameter that then gets evaluated with the chosen signature strategy, and this is then transferred also to the accept parameter that holds the selected signature strategy. Um, there's one technical say, boundary. Um, the input field for the digital signature that you might see here, and the complete functionality to set, uh, to determine the selected signature strategy and to transfer it has to belong to the same process in, in uh, instruction. It is possible, of course, um, to use this functionality uh, within repeated data requests, so it works for the simple data requests and also for repeated ones, but they have to belong to the same process instruction and the corresponding exit parameters that are defined, they have to belong to the parent except node of the process instruction. This is also required because we um, did implement some checks for um, let's say at least uh, com to check the completeness of the maintained data and 
this check uh, then um, checks the parent XTEP um, node as well as the characteristics of the process instruction. We'll see this later on working, hopefully, a good working in our demo. Uh, once we have, uh, say, um, finished this uh, definition step, then we also uh, will get this into action. And here, um, during processing of the PI sheets, once the, this body is activated, um, we then have, um, um, let's say, this following example. Here, in our case, we have a characteristic that has, that offers three weighing systems. One, two, three. After the user, user chose one, the, the second one, we have this um, push button that belongs to the dynamic function call. When we press this function button, we take the information of this um, input field where we select the weighing system and return the signature strategy. It then evaluates the uh, exporting parameter and also the um, exit parameter that then is assigned to the characteristic for the selected signature strategy. And then as the next step, we start the signature process. And once the signature process is started, the system replaces the placeholder that we defined before as the value for the signature strategy against the chosen one, against the value that was then transferred to the corresponding extra parameter that holds the information about the selected signature strategy data. So just before I, um, I will start with the demo, which makes it hopefully a little bit more clearer what we try to intend, um, we provide the possibility once um, we, have a multi we have selected a signature strategy um, and you try a multi-step signature strategy that consists of three steps. And at the second step, so the second signer then decides, okay, um, oh, we chose the, um, the wrong signature strategy or we can't um, continue with um, the signature strategy, then you can surely cancel the signature process. And um, if the, in our scenario here, if the user then wants to select another weighing system, which might be possible because perhaps weighing system got, defect, got a defect, then um, the um, value for the placeholder signature strategy is reset and could be then over, um, overwritten by the um, signature strategy that belongs to the new choice of the weighing system. So you can execute this uh, transfer uh, later on again. Um, if you don't, so the standard behavior um, in our PI sheets would be that once you have uh, this fixed uh, signature strategy assignment, without the new concept that we just described, um, you will get the same signature strategy once you have um, canceled the, the previous signature process. So there's, there's no possibility to choose another signature strategy. Um, we encapsulated this logic also in, in the body that you can exchange a signature strategy. And of course, you can uh, then override this behavior against the, the say, standard behavior that you say, okay, once we chose signature strategy, we don't want to get it, um, say, replaced by another one um, once we have a cancellation of the signature um, process. Okay. Then I would briefly the system. Just show you how this looks like in the extra repository. So I just uh, created a building block. I'm sorry for um, confusing you with uh, German text. Um, the, let's say the main objects that we had to develop are of original language German, and um, therefore we tapped in with uh, this, uh, things with German. Um, but um, here you'll see later on those things in English. Um, we have um, the process instruction. We have an input field that um, is named the choice of the weighing system, and the characteristic offers three fixed values. We have this dynamic function module um, that uh, simply um, maps the chosen weighing system to a signature strategy that exists in the system. We have the input field um, that executes the digital signature. You see this here just um, um, shows the shows the this dynamic signature strategy value. So the other values that you see here are um, signature strategies that exist in the system that you maintained before. 
and this is the one that is uh, the placeholder entry. I just chose this here, and also if you set a, a signature mode, a different signature mode, this then will also be mapped to the selected signature strategy. So we just exchanged the value of this um, placeholder against the value of the selected signature strategy. Okay, and what I also try to span is an output field that then um, demonstrates which uh, signature strategy we, we chose. Um, I told you that um, we also had to, let's say, we also had to think about how can we prevent that, let's say, imagine uh, one would like to use this dynamic signature strategy functionality but forget to um, uh, work with the, uh, to, to add all the required parameters and all the required characteristics and therefore we had, we extended the checks. So um, if I execute this checks, no error ever found because I did all the nice um, uh, pieces, uh, I tied together all the nice pieces of information. So I can just show you here, I created an extra parameter that I selected, uh, that I assigned to the this characteristic. Of course, I could have used a different custom characteristic for doing the same job. Um, so this character, um, parameter is also not evaluated. And um, um, if I would have not defined the proper characteristic, I would uh, get an error message. Um, one thing in advance, we also have a check when we um, here toggle to the view of the characteristics of the process instruction. You get an information uh, that says, okay, this is the German text for there's no foreign key check for dynamic signature strategies. It's just a warning message. You can also override this warning message. This warning message is raised because we evaluated this um, parameter PVI signature strategy with the um, placeholder value. And for the placeholder, we have not defined any entries in the customizing table. It's just added. And um, if because we did so, it does not make sense to check if the signature strategy really exists in the system. And therefore, we have this warning message, but you can also um, exchange the text of this warning message against, let's say, a text that's more, let's say, we think it's more, um, let's say, more helpful for your um, users. Okay. Of course, we will also have um, the English trans uh, translation available once um, we um, have the translation of the corresponding elements in the coding. So I just want to check if I perhaps have one thing, have a corrupted one. Okay. Um, so here in our place, I've chosen a uh, signature strategy. Uh, here um, we have the following um, constellation or situation. Of course, we have uh, defined an extra parameter that uh, can handle a selected signature strategy, but it is assigned to a different characteristic. In our case, um, we define that the characteristic that should take this uh, selected signature strategy is the standard one. Therefore, you get an error message if um, that the, uh, this characteristic um, is not existing, or let's say that we don't have an extra parameter. We also have a long text um, uh, that uh, gives more details, or more detailed information about what to do if you, you get this error message. If you would have chosen a custom characteristic, you would have uh, get um, the custom character. The custom characteristic is not assigned to the um, extra parameter, and then you would have uh, gotten. Uh, Similar error message. So this is an also, um, if you would try to use this, let's say, um, SXS reference node or SXS billing block, the reference node, and try to create a control recipe, you would also not be able to create a control recipe because um, uh, the system will detect that not all prerequisites for the dynamic signatures, the strategy usage are fulfilled. So this is something where we thought it might be helpful to pr um, pr um, prevent errors that might occur. If let's say I'm not uh, let's say I'm not the uh, all prerequisites for this dynamic functionality, dynamic signature strategy selection are fulfilled. Okay, so I want just to uh, uh, switch to an order. Here I created uh, assigned a building block. Where I did um, the choice of the weighing system just to show you how it looks like. We we'll just generate a control CP for testing. Everything went fine. Just send the control recipe. So 
So you can also just check the log. If something would have happened here that is um, say not working properly, then you would have get one more error messages, but we are fine for this. Now we just quickly demo how this looks like. Okay. So I have this input field. I'm able to choose the weighing system. So I will just choose uh, the second one. And now, um, of course, here I just uh, added the manual step, but you uh, surely can um, say at least uh, set the value for a corresponding signature strategy in an automated way. As I press this button, I see I just well the um, X step parameters evaluated with this corresponding signature strategy, a cross check, a double check signature strategy, and then I just will try to start the signature process. First individual signature, and I will hopefully remember second user. So Gary Lee. It works for SAP, you see. Okay, and I completed the signature process. Okay, um, if I would have uh, chosen another um, um, weighing system, let's say if I would have chosen the first one, then I would have got a, cro a single. As a signature strategy that just consists of a single signature, um, individual signature. And finally, I will just show you um, how the digital signature log looks like. We might see a little bit more information. So this is the one that I cared for. You might see the two um, individual signatures. First uh, taken by me, second by and also um, um, important, we chose uh, the signature strategy UD4I. So you won't see the placeholder value in here. You will see uh, exactly the signature strategy that was chosen. And um, also that the signature um, multi-step signature was successfully completed. I created a control recipe for the same process order um, before and, and chose the signature strategy um, 2I. You can also see that uh, the re replacement of the placeholder for the signature strategy um, worked fine. So this, um, in brief, um, is, let's say, a glimpse to the functionality that we're going to ship. We are um, currently, um, we've prepared a node, we're currently testing the node, and once it is available, we'll also um, uh, say release, then we also will um, give a short notice in our cafe. So um, before I would uh, talk about the second topic, um, might be good um, to answer your questions if you have some. So f please feel free to ask. Okay. Then I would just. We're, um, we're still here. We just have no questions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So the, so the main problem. You did a good. Is, uh, so fo Sorry. You did a good. You did a good job with the demo, so we could tell exactly what you were doing. Okay. I hope that it was overwhelming. <laughs> no. No, it was very clear. Okay. So um, we will also provide in, in the note in the note a um, little bit more information. Um, how to activate the body? I just will skip this uh, technical part uh, in our demo, but um, you will get more information on um, what to do. And uh, we also try to provide as much logic you can reuse as we can. So we, uh, especially let's say the check functionality, we we did some let's say some investigation what might be helpful, what to check, and so um, really to minimize the. Um, the problems that might occur from, let's say, um, insufficient maintained, uh, insufficiently maintained uh, XDEP data. So ho hopefully this will work, and uh, also for those that want to use this functionality, I think this could um, at least um, make the PI sheets and also the XDEP data you need for the PI sheets a little bit more, um, let's say, compressed or not, not uh, let's say, more focused on the, the business process. I did think of one thing, Yuri, um, Yuri is. Is this mm -hmm. because it's a baddie um, or a mm -hmm. bassy? 
it's not enhancement pack specific, correct? So if we're at enhancement pack four still of 6.1, we could still mm -hmm. take advantage of this? Um, so what, what we did, we just downported the node until uh, uh, to release um, to enhancement package five. But uh, if you say you need it for four, it, it should not be that big issue. So you okay. Need it, uh, so we you could need, just request it. it. Okay. You just, so um, um, so we can yes. Okay. Just continue. We were at, we are at four, and we won't be upgrading till next year. So if we were to okay. implement this in the meantime, we would need it at enhancement pack four. If it's not a it's not a lot of detail or work that would be that would be no. good for us no okay, no no it should should not be that problem so okay then we'll, we'll just put it on our list and we'll also talk to the colleagues okay. that you do so okay sounds good thank you yeah yeah you're welcome so before we, we come to the uh, let's say oral question answers part i would just continue um the second topic which is something that is was really um uh a, a tough one um if you work with uh, SXS versions, and uh, I think most of, um, uh, let's see, um, uh, SXS building blocks, most of you do, then um, you know that um, once you create a process order or manufacturing order, the system then automatically explodes um, the SXS reference node, and it always, it really always takes the, the correct ones. But we had this, uh, it, uh, the, uh, seen a very strange phenomenon, and this was um, that we, um, in a very, very, very rare case, <laughs> we had the problem that the wrong SXS version was assigned during manufacturing order creation. And it was hardly to reproduce. And um, not to make you scared, but to just to tell you um, something about um, the, 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 the reason why this could happen. Um, there are a, a set of uh, prerequisites for this phenomenon. The first thing is, um, let's say the most important thing is um, for the corresponding standard X step, there have been existing other SXS versions that have not been released. So we, you know also that um, there's only one released and released or, or released and approved SXS version valid at one point in time. But of course, you can create SXS versions, um, set them in into in, in process, and then they could have. And if you don't define a, an end date, you could have the fact that you have an overlap with current released SXS versions. Which in, in general case is not that bad, um, once you work with it. Um, but this was one, let's say, um, one piece of the puzzle. Um, the second thing that, um, we know where we, where we, then we, we were able to reproduce, um, this, uh, error was that, um, if you, uh, have created a process order and the system automatically, um, exploded the proper SXS version, and once you have not, uh, at the point in time when you have not saved uh, the order to the database, so this means you have this temporary order number. And if you uh, then uh, reset and re-explode this, uh, this SXS reference, the manual step, that's, that would say less people will do, and this, and especially in this temporary order, then it could be that you get um, the non-released SXS version exploded into the process order. And... Um, this we have we, we thought um, so it was really a, a very very strange phenomenon, and um, we pre pre I'm sorry provided um, an SAP note. Um, let's say to make it quite short. Uh, the main reason for this uh, strange phenomenon was we we uh, during the um, uh, explosion of the ex uh, to, uh, explosion of the SXS versions or the SXS, SXS reference nodes, we have uh, checks for the um, SXS versions, and we check if the system status of those versions allow that the SXS version can be used. Uh, therefore, we use um, function modules of the basis, and in general, they will raise an exception or return an exception code once the SXS version does not fit. Um, uh, so it has a system state, a state that uh, status that does not allow to be used um, in a productive environment. This is also the case. Um, so it works pretty fine in that way when we have this initial um, explosion of the SXS uh, reference nodes uh, during order creation. Um, the really strange thing is um, the, uh, the, the basis functionality for status management allows, um, on the one hand, to raise exceptions, but on the other hand, also to uh, not to raise exceptions, but to collect um, status messages. 
and then return um, the status messages that then say, okay, um, could not be set in the state, and evaluate uh, exporting parameters. And this only happens if um, the collection of messages is uh, in general, is switched on in the order. And we have one this one point in time where they're just uh, emphasized on. So when we have this temporary order number, uh, when we um, reset uh, at the point in time, we went to the except editorial reset and re-explode the SXS reference when this message collecting uh, was switched on. Unfortunately, we don't um, evaluate, we have not been evaluating those messages so far. So the system detects, okay, this um, first SXS version that was picked up was the version, version in process which has the valid uh, date and time interval um, that fits to the key date was taken. The system detects, okay, um, it does not have the proper system status, but it, it does not uh, raise an exception this, because the message uh, collection was switched on. It just returns the exporting parameters and, and also wrote the messages. And we nev we so far we did not evaluate the messages and the value of the exporting parameter. And what we did um, in the SAP node, where, where, so it consists of uh, some steps, but the uh, first thing is that we um, now ensure that uh, in any case, if the system status message is raised, or if, let's say if the system um, uh, status handling um, is switched on with um, to collect messages, that um, we don't lose the information of about those messages. So um, as, uh, as I told you, it was a very, very rare uh, example. And it was really hardly to reproduce, but um, it can have uh, uh, some very nasty consequences. So therefore, I just um, want to um, um, put uh, uh, at least take your interest um, to this note. We'll also mention it on the Excel Cafe slide. So um, we were really surprised um, to get such uh, such a problem because. Um, we, I think, still since the beginning of the shipment of exit uh, functionality, um, I think it was more than 14, 15 years ago, uh, we never had such problems. Yeah. But it's just fixed, and it works as designed, and it was really a very, very rare case where we got this problem. Okay. Um, then, I think, Saying thank you with the demo, and now we have uh, hopefully um, sufficient time for other questions and hopefully also some answers that we can give to you. Okay, we'll just just stop sharing. Hi, this is Sue. I do have one question. Okay, please continue, Sue. Um, so it really it relates a little teeny bit to your first subject, but not entirely. We have developed all of our X steps and process in English so far, and now we have a requirement to implement this in um, France and in the mm -hmm. Netherlands. So we need French and German. So what do we need to do to prepare ourselves to do this in multiple languages, the whole X step process order? instruction text, all of that, how much of this mm -hmm. is just translatable by choosing a different language when we log in versus mm -hmm. whatever else we have to do? So um, so, um, so, um, um, so we, we provided this functionality of those multi-language uh, um, X steps, but I think it's uh, part of Enhancing Package 5. I don't know if we downported this functionality. So. The, um, um, so we have so we have the possibility to support um, multi, multiple languages for um, distinct elements of the X steps. So also for um, I think for the input labels and I, uh, so most of the things I think at least almost uh, everything uh, that you see on the PI sheet um, uh, will then be uh, translatable. I, uh, I can provide you with the, the link in the documentation. But I uh, if I okay. so um, uh, but um, it could be that it's available. Um, as a, um, uh, I, sorry, um, to be honest, I don't know if it's if you um, downport it to HP5. I think it's available in each, uh, to HP4. It's in HP5, but I can uh, just uh, check this. And okay. um, then, then you would just um, I you would define your X steps in English as it do so, so, mm -hmm. um, did so far. Then you would then uh, just log on in, in with the French language. Then go to the mm -hmm. system. Then uh, be, just uh, be able to override. 
the fields, English fields with the, uh, France, uh, the French translation. And then you have uh, the French and the English um, a text. But I think um, during control recipe creation, it is important that you're logged in, that the, at least the users are logged in, in in French language, as far as I remember correctly. So that it's yeah, the, the, the user that, that uh, sends the control recipe, I think, uh, needs yeah, to be in, uh, have this language ac active. So you need to have different jobs for your different countries uh, to, to mm -hmm. do the control okay. recipe uh, sending. And also what I would like to add is that this, of course, makes only sense if you use the, the cross uh, uh, plant repository uh, because uh, then only then you can sort of use um, the same ethics as in different plants uh, where, where you obviously you have different languages then. Okay, so, so we need to activate to. the cross plant repository. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure, yeah. And that is, that is... Unless, unless you have more, a Swiss... <laughs> a Swiss uh, um, uh, plant where you, you have multiple languages in one plant. <laughs> yeah, we do actually. One of them is in um, Bern, Switzerland. So it is a Swiss plant. So I'll well, have to check that. Yeah, but, but probably there, there in Bern it's just German. So, yeah, you know, yeah you know, well, that's that. what they said, that they would just use German at that point. Mm -hmm. okay. So, so we need the cross-plant repository if we want to share the X steps. Unless we export and import into the other plants specifically. That could also be an option, of course. But then, then okay. you have uh, the, the double and triple maintenance if you want uh, if you change yeah. them. Yeah. So. yeah, yeah, yeah. And and of, and of course, if you um, so the there are I'll say um, the X the, the one uh, the disadvantage is that. Uh, you will then really work with copies. If you um, copy, let's say, download right. the text, so you know this there and, and upload it. So this might be not that nice. Um, okay, but uh, I will, we will just provide you some more information. So we, it, it is documented in an SAP library, and uh, also okay. we have a business business function that uh, let's say activates this functionality. And what's not, okay. let's say, possible? Um, we have this uh, objects like master recipes or process orders, they don't support this multi-language features. I think with the exception if you have those, um, those um, standard text blocks, but if you have the face description that you created in English, it will stay also in English if you um, log on in French as far as I got. So there's no multi-language multi support for this one, but of course um, well, the accepts provide such a functionality. Okay. okay. Good. Thank you. That's fine. That's my next yeah, job. I may be coming to Europe to scope out a project for Bern, Bern, uh, Switzerland, and Montpellier, France. <laughs> oh, if, if you if you pass Waldorf, you should visit us. Yeah. If I pass where? Waldorf. Waldorf in Germany. Waldorf. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I could do that. Take a little side trip to Germany. Yes. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> that was my biggest question. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Well, if not, maybe maybe I, I have um, housekeeping notes here uh, in terms of um, um, times in in the cafe. I, I, I'm not sure whether. The um, where is the? I need to um, whether the the small amount of people who are accessing the cafe right now is again uh, the reason of the time zone and and we have switched from winter to summer time. So mm -hmm. just for your information, uh, if if you want to really make sure. What this is in your time zone uh, here in, in the Except Cafe side panel where I have the next session information. There is this nice link here, and I always keep it up to date. And when you click on that link, uh, you can really see what this is. This time is in your time zone. Uh, you have the, all all the 
major cities around the world here you know, and you see what what the time is and which day in, in case it is you know another day of the week <laughs> yeah so that you really know okay this is uh the time I'm uh, at your place uh, so maybe that that would help uh, so again uh it is it is here this this link okay that's what I wanted to tell there's also been a lot of questions being asked in the Google community. Google, uh, except Google. I don't know if you've been watching all that going on, but there's a lot of questions, which uh, is a good thing. Yeah, it's 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 uh, also nice that there are also all uh, very often answers provided. Uh, so uh, I sometimes I, I look at those, uh, and, and sure enough, um, this could be also a source of, of uh, topics we could cover. Not sure, Uwe, do, do you follow the, the community there as well? Yeah, from time yeah. to time. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Arne, uh, one of the questions was, uh, um, you know, uh, we have asked uh, earlier how to use the short strings in the X steps to filter the pH sheets. For example, we have uh, different, different chemical wear rooms, so we need to have a different pH sheets. So how to uh, uh, put a short string and bring into X steps? How put? Uh, I, I didn't get the, the word. How put what in the index? No, no. We are using a short strings in the bill of material. That will short short the, yeah. short short string. Short, short, short string. string. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I, I didn't get that. Okay. Yeah. And we earlier we had this question, and uh, uh, you said next session you are going to show us how to use the short strings. Um, some noise around here. Uh, I didn't. I didn't really prepare for that. I'm very sorry. So, uh, um, um, I mean, the the how you can uh, get the sort string of uh, of the bill of material into the the extra parameters is clear to you. Yeah, here in the browser, yeah, with, with, with the valu valuation symbols, you, you you can do that. So that 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 is uh, uh, something we have covered a lot of times. So that that you can have uh, the salt string as as a parameter, uh, mm -hmm. since we have we don't have it as a standard uh, symbol. Mm -hmm. Might be something for the future, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but but yeah, uh, anyway, I, I, mean, I also had projects where, where where things like that also might might be in the. In the uh, in the, the equipment, uh, which is assigned to a certain phase or something like that. But, but, uh, in, in your case, it's assigned to, to the material, bill of material. So the yeah, thing is something you could yeah, use. Right. And, uh, then, uh, and what, what do you want to do with that? So you want to uh, define which, which weight scale you use there? Yeah, basically what we are doing is we are using that short strings and we are creating a filters. That mm -hmm. filters will, uh, you know, uh, pick up those materials and bring into the particular uh -huh. pH sheet. So you 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 don't, you're not using XFEPS, correct? Uh, we we are not using. So my my intention uh, was to my I, I'm going to use the XFEPS. So I'm trying to build up this uh, same. Yeah, uh, because uh, the filters you you are referring to this works differently in with XFEPS. Uh, there, there are no filters there. Yeah, uh, you are used it. Uh, you, you need to uh, use uh, the the body for generation scopes and and uh, field valuation. Uh, but yeah, there, there's right. uh, a whole. Yes, Uwe? Yeah, I, I, if I remember correctly, we have it's, it's, there's a similar functionality. We have this. Uh, we, have, we also have a body for um, that provides us a filter for the generation scope. But I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes, uh, there's, there's uh, the, the body for the um, valuation uh, for the generation scope. Huh? So you can. Okay. So there's there are standard uh, generation scopes for uh, all materials in your bill of material, and you can uh, use uh, a, a body to to provide specialized um, generation scopes. And I, I've done that in the past, and, and probably in, you you need to look up. Uh, just uh, share my screen again. Uh, it's you can easily find in in the Excel Cafe. You just need to uh, look for valuation symbols. For example, here in the we have this nice tag cloud, 
And I think, yeah, here. Yeah. The, the, the third session I did, uh, so it is in 2008, uh, and it's still valid here for, for this. Uh, it, it describes very nicely uh, how to use this body for symbols and generation scopes, and probably I, I did just that here. So I, I showed you this as an example to, to use the sort string and also some things like that. Uh, so, so, th so that is the, the first thing. So when you change from, from classical process instruction to, to XFs, you, you would need to do something on, on this area. So, uh, but then uh, this is just, uh, then you have um, just the, the, uh, the generation scope for a certain source string. And, um, ah, and that's, that would cover it already probably because then you could sort of say, okay, this is the, the, the X step for this way scale and then you have all the materials that, that need to be covered in with this way scale, correct? So this is your current current setup. Yeah, the current setup is uh, it is like that. So we we will not assign the material components into the way of uh, uh, phases. When we are loading into the machine we are assigning the components in the master city. Mm -hmm. So so for that reason we have we are using a short string in the way of uh, uh, faces, and we have a filters. That filter will okay. help us to bring the uh, particular components into. Uh -huh. uh, uh, do I understand you right? So, so, so you are using uh, the uh, not the PI sheet, but uh, you're using uh, the external control CP to to fill uh, uh, so to bring the the materials to your weigh, weighing system. No, we are not using uh, to bring the materials. We are uh, we are using a short string. That if, for example, I have four materials in the short string, I'll say uh, F01, F02, F03, F04, F05, yeah, yeah, sure. and then I have a control speed destination F1. F1 in the control speed destination, I put a filter wherever F01 is there. Uh, the short string value bring this yeah. component into that particular PI sheet. Okay, it's a PI sheet. So and, and then in the PI sheet, so you have uh, um, <coughs> different PI sheets for different weight scales, correct? Correct, correct, correct. Ah, okay, yeah. At, at the so time we are not consuming. At the time we are not basically we are not doing any goods issue. Once all the way up activity is done, and then we are doing a, a completeness check. And then we do a sequence check. When I do the sequence check, at that time the components will be consumed to the process order. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Um, since since you um, you uh, have a weighing process here, maybe you could also look at uh, the articles on on weighing here, and mm -hmm. also very maybe you you have not uh, had the chance to to look at this here. The weighing scenario session is uh, also a very nice uh, scenario I, I built, and it's mm -hmm. loosely coupled with with the consulting solution uh, SAP Consulting offers. Um, okay. For and, and I think they have implemented it now 20 times or so uh, different customers, so it's it's quite successful. Uh, just have a look at this how it could also be handled. So it's it's, it's probably a different approach uh, than than you have it, but uh, it's. Worth. Uh, and here's the, the yeah. By the way, this is the presentation on this uh, consulting solution. So, so uh, it's it's again it's it's very general. You you, you can uh, if you have a question or uh, something, you could either uh, use the search and search for a search term, or also look here on the tag cloud uh, uh, because I I tag uh, the sessions uh, very much, and you can see what whether you find something interesting here for you, and then you can can. Have a look at, at these uh, articles or, or web sessions. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, the other question I was having is uh, uh, how to migrate uh, the X steps uh, uh, with the master recipe. For example, I have a legacy system, uh, 100 recipes. I need to assign the X steps when I do the conversion. Is there any uh, standard? Uh, uh, I know. Uh, Lesson value or any, any I, tool which which can BDC can be used to for conversion yeah. master recipe conversion. Mm -hmm. I I just entered the migration here in the search field and there is my uh, my blog post. <laughs> I just en uh, put on uh, this year. So uh, is it possible to convert existing process instructions for PI sheets to X steps? And the answer is no. 
uh, because it's it's a it's a really very different uh, um, approach. Uh, uh, it 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 is, um, and I, I described here. Accepts our, our master data and process instructions are, are customizing. So that's, that's a general difference, and there's no automatic uh, report. Uh. There is, however, you, you could try um, in. You know, when you go into the XSEP repository here, and um, when you um, hold on, I just uh, try to to make a quick example. Uh, uh, create a new new. Uh, I need to change. So as you can see, I set up all all these things here with uh, normal XSEP uh, uh, procedures. And if you look at, the, at this process instruction element here, you have this tab here, which gives you uh, the characteristic and value pairs, uh, as you are used to it uh, with the classical process instructions. And you could try and uh, um, yeah, instruction by instruction. Yeah? You could try and do something like here. You can uh, append rows and and do a copy paste. You know, you can in, in customize. You can copy multiple lines and paste them here, and this will work uh, in terms of copy paste. But it mm -hmm. might not really work uh, functionality wise. Yeah? You might need this. Might uh, that, I don't know, Uwe. Maybe you you can say also something about that. Uh, this might work, but it also might not work because there are some some changes with uh, where the accepts do something yeah. differently. Yeah? So, so the, the the big uh, biggest uh, say difference is that uh, for the classical process instructions or the character we call it characteristic based ones, you can use those global um, global parameters, or global variables. Oh, yes. and this is not, mm. and this is let's say not. Um, not possible because the accepts have this, let's say, a little bit uh, uh, the different concepts with those um, local parameters, importing, exporting, and changing parameters. Um, so this would not, it would not be that easy to do this one by one. What you can try, of course, is um, what Anna just showed also to um, to, uh, to copy, uh, try to copy uh, the characteristics here in this. Um, um, node that uh, into this node that um, where well, you also do have the characteristics that um, are related to the objects that we define in the X steps. So that, like we saw before, and um, in some cases it might be possible to copy, let's say, the content of the characteristics from the uh, characteristic-based process instruction into those um, process instruction characteristics, but um, here would also recommend to think about um, uh, using those building blocks or a standard X steps so that you um, have, let's say, let's say, define content that you reuse in many master recipes, um, that you define this content as a standard X step, and then, you, and then, then uh, just referencing this standard X step in the master recipe. So this um, should be possible. Um, also, depending on the... Um, um, I think master recipe profile parameter that you choose, it is possible to continue with um, um, using classical um, characteristic-based process instructions. And then once, um, if the recipe profile parameter allows you to do so, then you can define your XStep tree and um, define the XStep elements. And at this point in time, uh, let's say the XSteps, uh, the process instructions, and characteristics that are defined um, using X steps are then taken once uh, the bus recipe is copied, copied into a pro, um, process order. So this is. Um, yeah, I, that that I, I also I also mentioned here in my post uh, that um, uh, it is also possible to to make the switch uh, recipe by recipe. Yeah? So you could uh, uh, start with with one uh, recipe. Uh, and, and uh, use X steps there and, and uh, ch check whether it is all working fine. Then you can gradually gradually move uh, uh, migrate uh, the the other so so uh, that's also possible here. Okay. Okay. So time's up, and um, 
Therefore, we need to stop at this point. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure, uh, Uwe, uh, the, 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 uh, what Sue said uh, about uh, the community is, is also valid, of course, uh, that, that we could try and, and uh, pick this. Uh, mm -hmm. However, it's, it's, it's a little bit difficult to really identify so we, we need to scroll through the, these, and, and uh, if the question is not answered and we, we feel we, we could help there, so we, we need to, to scan this uh, and then see what what we need to, what are the possible topics. Uh, uh, Perhaps you can, so we have, let's say, one topic that we just shifted, um, let's say, or that we, we didn't touch the, today. Um, this is something that would at least um, present you the concept in the next Exit Cafe. But of course, we we could have uh, a quick look um, on the Google community questions and, and try to identify those where we can provide you with uh, information if we uh, are not able to, let's say, a report should if other colleagues or, um, let's say, members of the community can't respond to those questions. Then we might check this. Yeah, maybe, Uwe, is, is, is that something you could more often do to, to, to yes. check the community and then um, if, if you feel there's something that, that might mm -hmm. uh, be, be a good thing, a good topic for okay. the session. I'll do so, so I'll keep this on my list, my long yeah. list. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so then I wish you all a, a nice day and uh, until next time, goodbye. Right. Thank you Bye. very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Sure. Bye. Bye.